everybody, welcome to Lancaster Quilt Week, and I am here with Barb Persing, who won first for her spectacular uh, peony quilt. So I'm going to ask her a little question. I know it's unusual. Normally Bonnie's doing it, but um, kind of hijacked it just a little bit. So Barb, this so is actually Lisa. one of my favorites. Um, why don't you tell me a little bit about your inspiration for this quilt? Um, the inspiration started with a photograph. So I'm not a great photographer, but I was actually visiting my children in Denver and took the picture at the Denver Botanical Gardens. And um, when I got home, I was looking through the photos and I loved the whole way that the quilt looked with the distance and the close up and I felt, I found it very inspiring. Awesome, awesome. So tell me a little bit about how you then take it from photograph to the actual finished product that you have here. I definitely like to work in large scale. So for me, this is a little bit small. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, thinking the opposite, but okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> uh, so I tend to do, cre I create a line drawing because mm -hmm. I'm not uh, a trained artist. So I'll okay. create a line drawing and then I'll take that line drawing and I'll blow it up into different sizes. And then just based on what looks best to me from a distance is how I choose what the size of the quilt's gonna be. I don't go in with any specific size until I've seen the drawings and have put different sizes on the wall. Okay. And do you pretty much stick with the colors in the photograph or do you kind of decide that maybe, you know, purple might be pink or pink might be purple or, you know, so how close to the photograph do you stay? Um, probably for this particular one, fairly close. Um, it was a really vibrant fuchsia peony, mm -hmm. so I didn't feel like I needed to stray. Um, the shadowing is something that is always a challenge for me. And so what I did for this piece, to me, this was um, my way of learning a lot. Okay. So I really worked with um, all types of fatigues and I pushed myself to try and create as much depth as I could. So tell me a little bit about the batiks that you did use because I have a feeling I've seen them before. You might have. <laughs> um, some of these batiks were actually created by my sister and I for Island Batik. Okay. So they were part of our first line, which was called Full Bloom. And so the center piece here was one of the original yellow pieces. And then some of the greens and some of the other pinks were actually from our first line. Okay. So it was, it was fun to actually create an individual piece with batiks that were out there now commercially. That's really cool. Yeah. So yeah. tell me about the techniques that you used to actually put everything together. My sister and I have been uh, pattern designers for about five years now and we have created a technique that we call edge coloring applique. We don't use any fusible and it was done with Roxanne's glue based it mm -hmm. and we glue the edges of the applique only. And the reason we use that technique is so that when I quilt it, to me, the quilting is just as important a step as all the other steps. Mm -hmm. So it creates depth and texture. And if I had fused the piece, then you wouldn't have gotten any of that. So it's very important when you have lots of layers to, for me, to use something that is soft and the glue works perfectly for that. Excellent. Yeah. And what made you choose, um, because I'm binding challenged, um, it's not like a, a normal binding. So tell me a little bit about how you go about deciding what type of binding you're going to put on a quilt. Is this the type that you put on all your pictorial quilts? Or um, do you kind of change it up a little bit? I do. I change it up a little bit. Um, when the piece is done, mm -hmm. if I can see an edge that looks like I want attention brought to that, then I will do a traditional binding. Okay. This piece to me, um, I just kind of felt like it was a postcard. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want there to be a harsh edge on it. Okay. Um, I kind of wanted all of the design to float uh, clearly through the edge. So I use a, a, um, a binding technique where I roll the binding completely to the back. Okay. Yeah. All right. So do you teach this technique? Do you have patterns for this? Like where can people find more information um, on your, the technique that you use to put this together? The technique is um, in many of our patterns. Mm -hmm. So that's fourth and sixth designs okay. and they can find us. And there are um, lots to choose from on our website. I do teach, I teach long arm and I teach applique classes. 
Um, and it's a technique that we've taught to beginners as well as advanced quilters. So you mean this is something that that I can Absolutely. learn? Absolutely. Because you know, I'm a little challenged with yes. putting together pictorial quilts. Right. As far as the applique process, um, it's very um, organic. Mm -hmm. So it takes away that actual perfection of it. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. So um, beginners can learn it as well as advanced quilters. And I chose to do a show quilt to show that that even raw edge applique is right. good enough technique right. for shows. Well, it is absolutely stunning. Um, Thank so you. So one last question for you. Okay. Um, how do you decide, once you talk, how did you decide to quilt it the way you quilted it? Well, I take all my cues from nature. Um, I didn't create anything unusual. So with my pictorial pieces, I'm not thinking about feathers or grids or that type of quilting. I'm always trying to think of what did the actual flower look like? Um, how can I get dimension in the stems? I think the hardest part about pictorial applique quilts is probably um, the background because you want it to be background and you don't want it to draw any attention, at least I didn't in this quilt. Mm -hmm. So sometimes quilting and wanting it to have a zero effect on your overall piece is the hardest thing to do. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. so for me, it's all about just going with basic textures from nature. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I lied. I do have another, another question. question. Okay. okay. So I know something that I struggle with is naming my quilts. So how did you come up with the name for this quilt? Obviously it's a peony, so that part was right. easy. But it what actually is a firelight peony. Is that what it's called? That's what it's called. Well, you can see I'm a little flower <laughs> challenged as well. All right. I <laughs> so you might be challenged as well. I am. We can't come up with names. I don't like to name my quilts. <laughs> um, so I actually looked up the botanical name of this quilt. All and right. that Okay. got me off the hook. I didn't have to come up with anything creative. Okay. So is that why, so so obviously, you know, you took this picture at the Botanical Gardens. Is that why you were trying to get me to go along with gardens last year with you so we can... Yeah, so you can learn a little bit about flowers. Uh, uh, clearly, I need some help with that. You need so to go. I, I really do. So that'll be our next field trip. There you go. Th there off to Botanical exactly. Gardens. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. Congratulations. It is so deserving um, of Thank first you. place. And so thanks so much for joining us here at Lancaster Quilt Week and you could be the big winner at the next AQS Quilt Week.